Hey everybody, Brian here with Trail Grid Pro. Really excited to be with you as we announce our partnership with Garmin and their great line of dash cameras for your Toyota truck. These dash cameras are gonna be a great peace of mind addition to your Toyota truck. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to install the Garmin Live in my 2021 Toyota Tundra. Real quickly, we're gonna go over the three options that you have to buy this bundle. The first is gonna be the camera as a standalone item. Garmin does provide you with a power solution in the box in the form of a USB cigarette adapter and a couple different length cords. The second option that you have available in our shop is the camera and our dash camera power adapter. This is going to allow you to grab power directly from the back of your auto dimming mirror and supply camera power while your truck is running. The third bundle option is going to be the Garmin camera and the Garmin constant power adapter. This is going to allow you to run power over to your OBD2 port under your dash to provide constant power, whether your truck's on or off for an additional peace of mind, even when your truck is parked off and unattended. Before we get into the install on this Tundra, I'm going to kick it over to Cliff and he's going to go over all of the great options on all of our Garmin cameras and all of the accessories that we have to offer. All right, let's get into some of the key features of the Garmin lineup. Now, we have a super comprehensive document, which we'll link in the description below, which goes over all of the features of every single dash cam in the lineup so that you can decide which one is perfect for you. But we're gonna go over a few of them today so that we can give you a good idea of what you're looking forward to when you choose to purchase one of the Garmin dash cam options. So, when we talk of field of view, all right, so when the camera is on, how much field of view is actually being captured? You've got all sorts of activity coming from your sides, um, so it's always helpful to have a wide field of view. So the Garmin Dash Cam Mini, the 47, the 57, and the Live all have a 140 degree field of view, which is pretty darn wide. Now, the 67W and the Tandem have a 180 degree view, which is obviously much wider. Either one that you go with, you're gonna have a super wide field of view, so you're gonna capture all sorts of goodies of what's going on around you and in front of your vehicle, but the 67W and the Tandem just have a slightly wider field of view. Another important feature is the megapixels that each of these cameras have, and then the resulting clarity. So, the dash cam mini and the 47 have 2.1 megapixels that's the camera and then the rest of the lineup has actually 3.7 megapixels so the result is that the dash cam mini and the 47 have 1080p record quality and then the rest of the lineup so the 57 the 67w the tandem and the live actually have 1440p quality which is like super high quality so what does that mean like you're going to be capturing details on your recordings which could come in super helpful if you ever need to use that footage to get yourself out of a jam another important feature of a dash cam that you should consider is gps information so date time speed and location you know it's great to have a recording of what's going on in front of you but if you can know for sure or someone else viewing this footage can know for sure where it took place it's super helpful so date, time, speed, and location, going from the 47, 57, 67W, Tandem, and Live, all have all of that. Date, time, speed, location. The Mini provides you with date and time. All right, the next one I wanna talk about is a super popular one to discuss, which is the parking guard feature. So are you recording when your vehicle is parked and off? So in order to accomplish that, you have to have a few things. You have to have constant power to these dash cams, which is accomplished if you choose the constant power bundle that's on our site. And the second for this section of the lineup is that you have to have Wi-Fi connectivity. So what that means is, is that your camera on all of these have to be connected to Wi-Fi. And you may be saying like, how am I gonna be connected to Wi-Fi when my vehicle is parked. Well, think if you 
have street parking in front of your house. Your camera can be connected to your home's Wi-Fi connection at work, same thing. So those are two examples where you could accomplish that. Now this is where the features of the Live really start to shine. And the Live is an LTE connected device. So essentially, you don't need Wi-Fi connectivity in order to have a live monitoring view of your live dash cam. All you have to do is set up your LTE connectivity, and then as long as you have constant power to it, you have a 24 hour a day view of what's going on out in front of your vehicle. Not only by recording, but you can use the mobile app from Garmin to look at the view of what's going on in front of your vehicle 24 hours a day on demand. So think about a ring camera for your vehicle. Like when ring cameras came out, they were super popular, still popular. Everyone has them. So this is the next cool thing when it comes to vehicles. So it's like, I want to know who's at my front door before I answer it. That's ring camera. It's the same thing for your vehicle. I want to know what's going on out in front of my vehicle, maybe before I walk out to my car. It's a huge safety feature, but also I can just monitor whatever's going on whenever I want to if I go with the live. The other quick feature that I want to touch on is a G-Shock sensor, so incident detection. All of these cameras have incident detection. So essentially, if the camera detects an incident, so just think your car is hit by another vehicle, it notices the shock, it will, no matter what, save 10 seconds of video before the incident occurred, and then 10 seconds of video after the incident occurred, and then upload it to the cloud in an incident report folder. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that all of these, unless you purchase additional storage, will keep 24 hours of recording. So what's cool about the incident is that it'll save that no matter what. So it saves that incident for you in case you need to use that for an accident you got in or someone hit your vehicle while you were parked, if you have the constant power option, that's gonna be saved for you so that you can see exactly what went on either when you were there or when you weren't there. The unique camera in the lineup is the Tandem for sure, because not only does it have a front camera, but it actually has an interior camera as well. So that at all times, while your vehicle is on, if you have the dash camera power adapter, or even when your vehicle is off, the front of your vehicle and the interior of your vehicle will be recording. And as I just mentioned, Garmin has an amazing app, which is obviously compatible with the entire lineup. So whether you want to just view some of the recordings that you've had over the last 24 hours, view an incident report, or if you've chosen the live with an LTE subscription, you can view from the app exactly what's going on right now out in front of your vehicle. You can pick up the Garmin app in the Apple or Google Play Store. And when I went to download it myself, I just happened to notice that it has super awesome ratings. So you can download it with confidence. So regardless of the dash cam option that you choose from Garmin, just know, as I mentioned, that you're going to have that peace of mind and security that you deserve in your vehicle 24 hours a day if you choose the constant power option. Now, I mentioned that people used to buy dash cameras just to be cool, but I got to tell you, these are pretty darn cool. Regardless of the one you choose, you're gonna have the latest GPS-enabled technology provided by Garmin, and we're super pumped to be offering these to the Toyota community. You guys can see, as Cliff talked about, there's a lot of cameras with a lot of great options, so there's a perfect fit for whatever you're trying to do with your specific vehicle and those features that you're looking for out of your dash camera. So today in the Tundra, we're gonna install the Garmin Live. I've actually had this in my truck for going on about a month now, and it has been awesome. One of the great features that I like about the Live, and I actually have my phone pulled up here. My phone actually connects, so it's kind of like, think of a ring doorbell for your truck. So as you can see right here on my phone, we have the media department back there. Um, actually, this camera is not even plugged in. I took this out of my truck about 20 minutes ago. It is still powered on and working. So um, obviously a great addition, awesome functionality that if I have any question about what's going on or I get an alert next to my truck, that it pops up on my phone and I can literally pull up a live view right here on my cell phone. So um, that is definitely an awesome thing when your truck's parked out and gonna be unattended for some amount of time. Before we get started with the install in the Tundra, I wanna go over just kind of some of the things that you can expect to receive when you purchase these items from us. Obviously the camera is going to come with the camera, the mount here, and it has a magnetic mount on it 
You will also receive a spare magnetic mount in the box. So just in case you need one down the road or you wanna switch cars, uh, Garmin's already included that in there for you. It also comes with a USB power adapter. Um, we're not gonna use this today, but what I actually found this is great, especially in the Tundra where you have the cigarette lighter in the rear console. I just popped it right in there. The kids can plug their tablets in there and it works great for that as well. So kind of a, a free power adapter there, if you will. You're gonna get a short and a long USB power cable that you can use to power the camera. And then if you get the option with our dash camera power adapter, you are going to get the appropriate dash camera power adapter, depending on how many pins the back of your auto dimming mirror has. And then it's also gonna come with a couple of short power cables. So I'll show you how to use those when we do the mirror install. And the last power option is the Garmin constant power adapter. This is what I've been using, like I said, for about the last month. Um, so this has been super awesome. You can see right here, I'll show a close up in one of the uh, pictures, but you can set it for 10 minutes, 24 hours or infinite. So depending on if you only want your camera to stay on 10 minutes, 24 hours after it powers off, the truck powers off, um, then you have the control ability right there and it's easily accessible at your OBD2 port. So a lot of great stuff here. So let's get started and we're gonna do the installation of the dash camera power adapter first. And then later on in the video, we'll show you how to do the constant power adapter. So let's jump in the truck and get started. Before we get started with our Garmin dash camera install, we need to grab a few tools from the toolbox. So what you will need to grab from your toolbox is a couple of panel removal tools. We prefer the plastic ones, a pair of some sort of cutters. I have some little flush cuts here. We always need our trusty handful of zip ties. And uh, I always like to grab a panel removal tool uh, just in case. So we'll set all this to the side and First thing that we're going to do is actually going to move our mirror. So we're going to leave all our tools in the glove or in the cup holder here. Now it's it's crucial to kind of we want to figure out where we want to put our camera. So depending on what camera that you got is going to depend on where you want to put it. The Garmin Live only has the front view camera, and where I like to place mine is tucked up behind the rear view mirror. Uh, we, we know that it either has power from our Trail Grid Pro dash camera power adapter or the Garmin constant power. So um, I don't really feel the need to look at the screen while I'm driving. I, I find that more of a distraction. Um, but if you like to look at the back of the screen, then that's completely up to you. Uh, or if you got a camera like the Tandem where you have a front and an in-cab camera, obviously you don't wanna block the in-cab view. So this is the time in the install to figure out exactly where you wanna place your camera. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my camera and you will need to make sure that the little magnet disc with the tape is on here. Like I said, I already had this installed in my truck for about the last month. So I didn't peel the magnet off of the windshield, but basically I'm gonna mock this up. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that once you have your camera mounted wherever it is that you still have the ability to adjust your mirror. Obviously that is a vital component of driving your truck. So where I'm gonna put mine is, as you can see, it's right here behind the mirror. And then we can just make sure that this is pivoted down. And that's gonna be kind of the view that we want. I still have operation of my mirror up, down, left and right. So that seems like a pretty good place. So let's go over how to connect the power. So we're gonna twist the mirror like this and what we're looking for on the tundra is this cable right here that runs into the back of your auto dimming mirror so what we want to do is there's a tab in there we're going to reach in to press the tab and pull out the connector so what we want to do confirm here is we're going to count the total number of holes in the connector so we have one two three four five six two rows of six makes twelve so uh, on my truck, I need a 12 pin. So hopefully we confirm that before we ordered. If not, let us know. We will get you the connector that you need. So two ends of the dash camera power adapter. Obviously we have a male and a female. So the connection, the connector from the truck is going to go we're gonna plug it in and you see that only fits in one way. And the male end of the connector is going to go right back into the back of the mirror. So we're gonna grab the included power wire here. So we need the micro USB, which is gonna line up right there on the side of our camera. 
We're going to plug that in, and then at this point we can mount our camera back to the windshield. We're going to find our USB adapter here off our dash camera power adapter, and we're just going to plug the two together. Last step in the process is we're going to find a way to neatly tuck all of our wiring away. So we're going to grab one of our handy dandy zip ties and we will, I think we're going to try to just loop this around. We may need one or two to get this accomplished. So I think what I'm going to go for here is we're going to try to get the adapter, the connector, and then zip tie it to the factory wire so let me pull the camera down real quick so you can get a better view of that we're going to attach this to that and go back here to the factory wire and we're just going to zip tie all of that together um, when we get the mirror back you'll see that most of that is pretty much hidden behind the mirror that's another reason i like to mount mine there but again that is personal preference let's go ahead and since we have a little better access with that camera out of the way We'll go ahead and line all of our stuff up and get the zip tie started. And we'll get all that tightened up. Of course, grab your cutters or your flush cutters, whatever you have. Now we can, there we go, we can mount our camera and we can plug our power wire back in. And then once we tuck our mirror back, everything will be nice and hidden out of the way. All right, so as you guys can see, that is a super simple install that literally took us five minutes. Um, so installing is really simple, really easy to do, very minimal tools. There is a little bit of setup that you need to do once you get your camera powered on for the first time. So I'm gonna send it back over to Cliff and he's gonna walk you through exactly how to get your camera set up, how to connect it to your phone, all of that great stuff. When we come back, I'll show you the other option with the dash camera constant power adapter. Okay, so we're powered on here, as you can see. It wants to know, where are we? So we're United States, so we're gonna go ahead and select that. As you see there, that's the bottom button here on the right-hand side for the 67W. We like American English here, so we're gonna press yes. And right now, it seems to be powering up. We've got a warning here. And camera placement, we're in the center of the windshield, so we're gonna select yes. And vehicle height, uh, uh, I don't know, are we tall? We might be tall. Yeah, we're tall. We're going to go tall. And record audio. This is a choice. Do you want it on or off? I'm going to do it off for now, just for space sake. And then the Garmin Drive app makes it easy to view and share videos from the secure online vault. Okay, got it. So we can go ahead and scan for the Garmin app. Look at that. That's fancy. All right, we're going to hit download, and whew, look at that, it's fast. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open it up. Drive would like to use Bluetooth. Yes, you can use Bluetooth. It would like to send me notifications. Sure, I'd like notifications. Read the agreement? Yep, I read it. You got it there? I agree. Okay, so we've done that step, so let's go ahead and click that. Okay, so we're on... Okay, so we're gonna select our device. It's the Garmin Dash Cam series, so it's looking for our Garmin Dash Cam. To enter pairing mode, use the buttons on the Dash Cam 47, 57, 67W. Select Garmin Drive app. So it's saying to push here. There it is, Garmin Drive app. Okay, okay. Searching for Garmin Drive app. Pairing, yes, I want to pair. Connected, getting pairing information. Okay, so at this point, you're gonna click select an accessory. There is our dash cam, so we're pressing that. Boom, 461337, 461337. Let's click pair, and let's accept up here. Hey, look at that, we're connected. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create an account here real quick. And we'll do that off camera real quick so we can show you the rest of the features. Okay, so we've gone ahead and set up our account. All it asked for was our name, email address, and a phone number to be able to send a secure code to. So we've got it all set up. And now that you're in here, this is where you can get into your live view. You can take pictures right from your dash cam. You can save video. 
Here's where your videos and photos are stored. And then here's the vault, which if you have vault set up, then you can s store tons of data all from your dash cam and it's accessible right through the app. Super cool, super simple, which is what I like. It's very intuitive and um, it's obviously a great complement to the Garmin suite of dash cams. Now that Cliff showed you how to set up your camera once you finally have everything mounted, I'm also gonna show you the other option, which is the Garmin Constant Power Adapter. This one is gonna plug into the OBD2 port, which is on the Tundra, is located right here to the left of the steering wheel at the bottom of the dash. So what we're gonna need is our Constant Power Adapter, and then we're gonna need one of the power wires that comes in the Garmin box. It's gonna connect directly into the camera. We're gonna run it across the top of the windshield. We're gonna come down this outside of the A-pillar, and we're gonna come right down into to where the OBD2 port is. We're gonna wire everything up, and then I'll show you a nice way to tuck it all away. But first, again, we need to get our camera mounted. So we'll go ahead and grab the camera and we'll get it in place. All right, I got the, again, we're doing the Garmin Live. I have one of the power cables that came with the camera. So you'll see that it has the similar style connector. Again, we're gonna plug that in right here on the side of the camera. So let's go ahead and do that before we get it into place. Now we're gonna mount our camera. So to do that, we're going to move the mirror to the side just to give ourselves better access. In the previous part of this video, we already had it mounted up. So we'll just go ahead and stick this into place. And where we're gonna route this is actually right over where the power wire for the mirror is. There is a black plastic cover that covers up the wire as it runs up the windshield. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out so I can give you a little bit better look and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. But basically, if you reach up towards the top of the headliner there, the outer part will slide down and then the bottom has two little retaining clips. So if you don't have anything else mounted up here, you can just push on the bottom and then the whole piece will pop out. I've gone ahead and removed that little cover for the wire there. So as you can see, the two pieces slide within one another. And then right here at the bottom is the two little clips I was talking about. And you can just give it a little push inward and then it will pop out. So what we want to do is run our dash camera power wire up through here. And then that'll give us a nice clean way to get it from the camera up into the headliner console. So we'll put the camera wire through there and then we'll pop this back in place. You're gonna start by locking in the bottom and then sliding the top up until these two little fork ends here just sit right up behind the headliner. All right, so let's work our cable over. Again, we can put it in the plastic cover and then we're gonna work this into place. I actually have a antenna up here for a remote start, so that's blocking a little bit, but we can still do it. All right, so there's the bottom. Bottom's locked into place. We can pull the slack and we'll slide the cover up until it hooks on the top of the headliner console. With it hooked up here at the top, at this point, I'm gonna grab a panel tool. I like the one with a little bit of the curve or the angle on it. I just find it's a little easier to, you can use it to tuck the wire in the headliner console. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna run straight across the top of the windshield towards the A-pillar. So we can use our tool. And we're just gonna keep working our way across until we get to the corner of the windshield. At this point, we're gonna flip our tool over and we're gonna push the wire down behind the plastic of the A-pillar. You can also use it to make sure that it's nice and tucked up in the corner there. Just keep working it around towards the door jam. And this is a good time to just make sure that everything is tucked up out of the way. Everything's nice and secure and we don't have any loose loops of wire anywhere. So that looks pretty good. So at this point, we're gonna move to the outside of the door with our wire to the outside of the door here. We're gonna pull back on the weather, the door molding, the weather seal, whatever you wanna call it. And yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and remove it and show you here. We're just literally gonna lay the cable 
in here inside the plastic. And then kind of as we go, we can just push this back into place. As we push that back into place, it's going to kind of hold progress for us. Next thing we want to do is we're going to pop off this little side panel right here to do that. All you, again, all you need is a panel removal tool. You just go right in here at the bottom, give it a little twist and you'll see that it will release the three pins here and then we can slide this out of the way and while we're here making ourselves access we're going to go ahead and pop off the switch panel here that has your mirrors um, and all of this so we are going to insert the panel tool there's a little edge here at the edge of the panel and once you get it started you can kind of just hold it and we'll just gently work it out. All right, there we go. So it's just kind of held in with these little pressure clips here. And what this is gonna give us great access to do is once we plug everything in, we can manage all of the wire right back in here. And as you can see, it's a nice big space so we can get our hands in there easily. So at this point, let's go ahead and we're going to keep running the wire down the door jam. And again, make sure you got all the loops and knots and everything out of your power wire here. And what we can actually do is you can reach in and you can see kind of like where my fingers are. There's lots of room here. We're actually going to go between the metal door skin and the dash. And there's enough room back there where you can snake the USB-A end of your power wire through. And then when we pull the slack, that is going to get us from the door jam into the dash. Just take your time doing this. And then we can go up here and make sure that our wire's tucked away and we can put our door molding back in place all the way. Go ahead and give it a push, make sure it's not caught on anything. Go all the way up and around. All right, so that is in place. We can grab our side panel. The tabs here are gonna go towards the front of the truck and then that will just snap back into place. The next piece that we wanna grab is our OBD2 constant power adapter. Uh, so now is a good time to go ahead and set your power setting. So a little selector switch here. It's a three position switch. So all the way to the left is 10 minutes. In the middle is 24 hours and all the way to the right is infinite. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on 10 minutes. And then what we're going to do is we can grab the USB-A from our power wire and we'll just plug it into one of the two outlets here. So another great thing about this power adapter is you do have two USB A's on there. So if you wanted to also run power off of something else, you have that option as well. So that's kind of a great addition. And then we'll take the large end and you can see the bottom of the dash there. So we're just going to feed it down and it's going to pop out below. Now that we have the OBD2 popped out of the bottom of the dash, we'll go ahead and plug that in. And then the only thing we have left to do is manage up a little bit of wire and put this panel back on. So let's show you how to connect the adapter. All right, so as we can see, this connection will only fit on one way, but here's what we're looking for. So it's really just a matter of lining the shapes up and pushing it into place. And you can see here, the little indicator light came on. So obviously power is feeding, so that is perfect. So now all we need to do is we're gonna go back up top and we're gonna manage up this wire and we're gonna be done. All right, let's get this wire cleaned up here. So we're just gonna kind of pull slack from both sides. You can see our connection there. So we're just gonna get this wrapped up. We'll get it zip tied kind of together and then we'll make sure that it is nice and zip tied up out of the way inside the dash so that this doesn't fall out in front of the pedals. So let's take care of that. Now we have that zip tied up out of the way. Last thing we need to do down here is just take this panel and we're just gonna push it 
right back into place and then we can make sure we fix our mirror and that wraps up the install with the constant power adapter so as you guys can see these are really straightforward simple installs uh, i would say on average you're looking at 15 30 minutes absolute maximum so these are going to provide a lot of like i said in the beginning a lot of great security peace of mind as we know people are absolutely insane drivers on the road so safety and security there also another great way to capture off-road footage they do have all sorts of features where you can turn audio on and uh, if there's any sort of event it will automatically record obviously you can hit the button so if you're on the road or off the road and you see something you want to record you can absolutely do that and like i said in the beginning of this video i think one of the best things about the live is like the i said the ring doorbell like feature of i can pull it up and so if i think that there's something going on outside and i want to make sure that my truck's okay i can check on that right from my phone so if you want to pick up any of our garmin dash camera power bundles either for your tundra or i'm gonna let you in a little secret they fit 4Runners, Tacomas, Avalons, anything with an OBD2. You can use the OBD2, or obviously we have our supported platforms for our Trailgrid Pro dash camera power adapter. Those are all available in the shop right now at www.trailgridpro.com. And like always, have a blast out there.